Hey everybody, I'm Elizabeth McSwan from Emac and Hedwig, and today's video is about some Sony thoughts. So here we go. I recently got the Sony 200 to 400 G lens, and I did an unboxing of that lens. If you want to check it out, I'll throw it in the description below. And in anticipation of that lens, it just got me thinking about my experiences thus far shooting with Sony. It's been almost two years, and I just thought I would share those thoughts with you. The first thing that I want to talk about is my experiences shooting with my camera bodies. Now I've got the A7R3 and the A9. And the A7R3 is the first camera body that I bought from Sony, but the first one that I checked out and used was actually the A9. When the A9 was announced with all of its features and stuff, it really got my attention. And there were a few things about this camera that really stood out to me. The first one was the actual, like legit silent shooting, <laughs> as opposed to other camera manufacturers which say that they're silent, but they're really not. Having an actual silent shutter was really intriguing to me. The second thing that was really interesting to me was the like bazillion focus points. That was something I was constantly coming up against when I was shooting with Canon, com trying to compose a moving subject, usually a bird, and not having a focus point where I wanted one was really frustrating and it was happening a lot. And the third thing was the EVF, which by no means is anything new with this camera with the A9. They, they're certainly not the first camera to use an EVF, but it was the first time that I really considered the benefits of having one over an optical viewfinder. The one thing about the A9 though that I didn't really like was the resolution, or I should say lack thereof. I had been shooting with the Canon 5 DSR, and what can I say, I love megapixels. And I legit said to myself, hey, if Sony comes out with a camera that's say half of the frame rate, but more resolution, I would be interested. And then they announced this guy, and I was like, oh. Okay, well there you go. So I pre-ordered the a7R 3 and that was my first Sony camera. And I knew that it was more complicated than this, but for me, the a7R 3 to me just seemed like the A9 with less frame rate and more resolution. And while that is true, I now know after using both cameras that it's a little bit more nuanced than that. If the A7R 3 has the megapixels, I would say that the A9 has the AF speed and accuracy. After shooting with both of these cameras, I realize now that the AF system is noticeably better with the A9 than it is with the a7R 3 And some of the problems I was having with the a7R 3 which I blamed on the lenses that I was using, and the fact that I was using an adapter and they weren't native Sony lenses, I think also contributed to that. But what also contributed to my AF accuracy and speed problems was, I think, the a7R 3 itself. It's just noticeably slower to autofocus. Is it terrible? No. But after using the A9, AF speed and accuracy with the a7R 3 is just behind. It just is. My go-to camera and lens is the A9 with the 400mm f2.8 GM and the 1.x teleconverter. And with the new firmware update, I use the new subject tracking autofocus mode with the A9. And so I keep the focus point in the middle of the frame and I compose my shot so that the focus point is on my subject. I press the shutter button halfway because I use shutter button focus, and then I recompose. And doing that, the A9 has been able to keep the focus where I want it to be, usually on the head of my subject, if not the eye, and it works really, really well. The same mode for the A7R 3 is just not nearly as good. I do the same thing. I keep the focus point in the middle. I press the shutter button down halfway. I recompose the shot how I want it, and the focus will immediately jump somewhere else a lot of the time. So it's just not as reliable in that specific mode as the A9 is. So because of the just unbelievable autofocus of the A9, it's really become my go-to wildlife camera body. Like I said, I pair it with the 400 to 8 with the 1.4x teleconverter. But if I want a little bit more reach, I will use the A7R 3 with the 2x teleconverter because the, the images just look so much better with the 2x on the a7R 3 
than the 2x on the a9 it's just there's a noticeable difference in quality there so if i want the reach i kind of deal with the fact that i'm not going to have as many keepers as i'm going to have with say the a9 the other ways that i use these two cameras i'll use the a9 for portraiture because i generally don't need the huge files of the a7r3 for portraiture for things like landscapes astrophotography macro photography i'll go for the a7r3 every time it's just a fantastic camera for that kind of thing so those are my thoughts on my cameras i also wanted to talk about sony's growing long lens lineup i am super excited where they're going with their long lenses this the 200 to 600 f5.6 to 6.3. I'm so excited for this lens, even more, I think, than the Sony 600 f4, because now we finally have a legit focal length for the average consumer for wildlife. We've got this general focal range and aperture range with the Tamron and Sigma lenses, but I think for us Sony shooters, this is really going to be the way to go. And having a native Sony lens that you don't have to use an adapter, you get all the advantages of the Sony camera AF system. I know a lot of people are using the 100 to 400 GM lens, and I think that's a superb lens. It's super sharp and the focusing is really, really great. It's just not long enough, in my opinion, for a lot of what wildlife photographers photograph this lens is really, really advantageous, mainly because of the focal length. Because at 600 millimeters, as opposed to 400 millimeters, it's so much easier to fill the frame with your subject and you get more megapixels onto your subject. Of course, my new 200 to 600 lens joins this guy here. This is the 400 to 8 with the 1.4X teleconverter attached. And I've been shooting with this lens now for a few months. I want to say like four, four months, I think. And I really just love shooting with it. It is a dream. I will say though that I'm coveting that 600 F4. I don't have plans right now to trade this in for the 600, which is what I would do if I was going to get the six, but um, it's tempting. It's, it's very tempting. I really think that it was a smart move for Sony to jump from the 400. They skipped the 500 and they went straight to the 600. I think that that really helps both the consumers and Sony. It helps us, the consumers, because now the 600 propels us into a lot tighter focal lengths, right? With the 600 and the 1.4X teleconverter, you have something like, I think, like an 840 millimeter lens. And then, of course, with the 2X, you have 1200 millimeters of focal length. So it really just gives us a reach that was just completely unattainable, right? As opposed to the 500, which would be more for sure. It would be, it would definitely be tighter. It wouldn't be as big of a jump, right? It also makes sense for Sony because if you look at the other camera manufacturers' price points for their F4 primes or their long, their long telephoto primes, like if you look at Canon and Nikon, you'll notice that their 500 F4s are actually priced lower than their 400 to 8s. So it just makes sense for Sony if they're going to follow that pricing trend to put out a lens that's even more expensive than the 400, right, at the 600. The one thing that concerns me though about the 600 f4 is that the 400 f2.8 is still really hard to get. You can't go on BNH or Amazon for that matter or Adorama or any of those places and just buy the 400 to 8 lens. There's still, a, I think, a fairly long waiting period. So is the 600 f4 going to follow the same trend where you can't really get it anywhere and you have to wait for months from the time that you order it to the time that it's actually in your hands? I am still not sure what is taking so long making these lenses. So to add another lens, the 600 f4 seems like you know why don't you kind of figure out how to make the manufacturing of the 400 faster before adding a 600 to the mix but i really don't have any clue as to kind of the inner workings of the sony factories and what it really takes to make these lenses so maybe it won't interfere and certainly less people are going to be interested in the 600 versus the 400 i think the 400 to 8 is a little bit more desirable to people than the 600 but you know who knows i guess time will tell on that one the last thing i want to talk about is the new a7r mark 4 because 
I am really excited about this camera. As of this video, I don't have any plans to pre-order one, but I just look at the specs, especially that megapixel count, because I love megapixels, and I think that having 60 megapixels on a Sony camera body is really, really cool. And I hear a lot of complaining on social media about, oh, like, who needs 60 megapixels? Who needs that? Blah, blah, blah. Who needs it? Who needs it? Nobody needs it. And you know what? I don't care. Maybe I, I probably don't need it. But you know what? I still want it. It's still cool and fun. And yeah, I'll take it. What I'm especially interested in with the A7R Mark IV is if there's a noticeable difference in image quality with a 2x teleconverter, because I do think that the higher resolution cameras with the teleconverters just will look a lot better. Uh, I have no proof of that yet. That's just a hypothesis that I have, just based on how I think that the files with a 2x teleconverter with the A9 look versus the A7R Mark III. So I'm really interested to see if there's a discernible difference in image quality with the A7R Mark IV. Some other things that I'm interested in, I'm really interested in the number of focus points. They increase the number of focus points. I will say that with the A7R III, I don't really feel like I need more focus points, but I like the fact that it's getting closer to the amount of focus points that's on the A9, because the A9 is pretty much over the entire sensor. So I just think that's cool that they're adding focus points. I'm also interested in the AF system of the A7R Mark IV, and if it's better than the A7R Mark III. So that's something that I'm gonna be looking to test, perhaps, once the A7R Mark IV comes out. Perhaps I'll rent one and just do a little bit of a comparison in AF performance between that and the A7R Mark III because if there was a significant difference in AF performance and in how the files look with a teleconverter attached, those two things would maybe make me consider trading in the A7R Mark III for the Mark IV. So we'll have to see, time will tell on that. So those are my thoughts on all things Sony related, at least for now. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel, it would help me out a lot. You can also find me on Instagram. I post a lot of my work on Instagram. It's the best way to see my work. So please check me out over there. You can also find me on Patreon for as little as $2 a month. You can get early access to videos like this along with a bunch of other really cool stuff. The link is in the description below. And until the next video, everyone, take care. Happy adventuring, happy shooting. See you later.